everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Now, last week, we discussed how free trade agreements could help Sri Lanka look towards a better business environment and opportunities. However, those FTAs should be drawn according to better uh, ways of making our economy work, not be an, a slave to another nation. Now, one key free trade agreement that's in discussion is with China. This uh, FTA will uh, cover trade uh, in goods, services, investment, and economic and technological cooperation. Joining me now from Beijing, China, via Zoom is Sri Lanka's ambassador to China, Dr. Palitha uh, Thank you very much, ambassador, for your time. Good to see you once again. Now, ambassador, what is the current situation uh, of the FTA between China and Sri Lanka? Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you again, Manish. Uh, we've had some very interesting discussions in the past. The free trade agreement, yes, the free trade agreement is back on the table. The two sides, China and Sri Lanka, are discussing the details. Of course, we have to remember uh, that the economy of Sri Lanka is substantially different from the economy of China. China is the second biggest economy in the world. And some people say that it will become the first uh, largest economy uh, within the next decade or so. So when Sri Lanka is negotiating with such a big economic power, it has to ensure that certain safeguards are incorporated into an agreement. This is what we uh, industries, our uh, agriculture is safeguarded. And I'm, I'm certain that the Chinese side understands this because uh, it's, we are not two equals negotiating to conclude a free trade agreement. We are uh, substantially different in our size, in the range of goods that we produce and export, etc. So there are so many things to be resolved at this stage. But I'm very confident that uh, this can be done. The President of Sri Lanka, Rani Vikram Singh, has uh, said clearly that he intends to have this agreement concluded this year, hopefully sooner than later. The Chinese side has also been pushing us hard. Uh, there is considerable goodwill. So I'm, I'm certain, I'm confident that we will be able to have an agreement very soon. It's also uh, something that we need to remember that many of the other countries in our region and outside who have concluded free trade agreements with China have benefited immensely. Uh, their exports to China have in increased exponentially. China is the biggest consumer market in the world. And there are so many things that we can export to China if only there were an agreement of this nature between the two sides whether it's our agricultural products, marine products, uh, our uh, garments, our uh, fisheries products. There are so many things that we can export to China, but we need the framework of an agreement of this nature to be in place for that to happen. Indeed. Uh, now, Ambassador, uh, China has been opting towards a more silent stance regarding Sri Lanka's affairs recently, especially regarding the economic crisis. Is China now considering Sri Lanka to be an unreliable friend? I think that's a very unfair question that you're asking me. And here I am sitting in Beijing uh, responding <laughs> to the question. No, I don't think so. I, I, and on the other hand, China has constantly been, uh, been our friend and supported us in many ways. China has consistently supported us at the uh, Human Rights uh, Council in, uh, in Geneva, and in many other ways, when we needed vaccines last year, at a time when the COVID uh, epidemic was spinning out of control or threatening to spin out of control in Sri Lanka, it was China that came up with 26 million doses of vaccine, three of which uh, were gifted to Sri Lanka at a time when other countries, other manufacturing countries, either could not or would not give us the vaccines. Uh, so it's very unfair to say that Sri Lanka is not Sri Lanka is not being considered as the close friend it was with China. I think uh, it's uh, and then very importantly, recently China listed twenty countries to which uh, Chinese travelers 
could go to on a pilot basis. Uh, and Sri Lanka was in that group of 20. Uh, and, you know, the, the Chinese are just bursting. They're waiting to get out and travel. And for Sri Lanka to be put into that category of 20 is a major achievement. It's a reflection of the closeness of our relationship, the strength of the bonds between the two countries, and of course, uh, with thousands of Chinese travelers coming to Sri Lanka, it would make a huge difference to our efforts to recover from the financial crisis that we are in at the moment. We, the embassy is working very hard on this issue. And in fact, on the 28th, have a major promotion of Sri Lanka uh, with over 100 Chinese travel agents and media people attending an event at the embassy. So I, 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 I think that it's very important to remember that the strength of the relationship is still the same. Uh, there may be detractors who will say otherwise, but uh, rest assured, China remains a close friend and a very strong ally. Absolutely. Uh, we have to leave it at that. Uh, that was uh, Dr. Palitha Kohone, Sri Lankan Ambassador to the People's Republic of China. Thank you very much, sir. Let's take a short commercial break. This is a State of the Nation. Back in a moment with the close.